Next up, we have What Happens to Your Print When It Comes to the Archives with Valerie Double. Valerie is Professor of Art at Kennesaw State, and she is SGCI's Archives Coordinator. Hi, I'm Valerie Dibble, and I'm Archives Coordinator for Southern Graphics Council International. I'm also a Professor of Art at Kennesaw State University and the Coordinator of the Printmaking Concentration. I've been asked to share a little bit of information about what happens to your print when it comes to our collection. I happen to be standing in our new printmaking studio because I couldn't help but want to show it off to you all. But I'm really here to just share information about the history of the archives and what happens to your print when it becomes part of our collection. Okay, I'm out of that loud studio, but I I have to tell you, we really appreciate the good airflow the ventilation system provides. And I did want to give you a little sneak peek, so I appreciate it. But now I'd like to share a little bit about the history of the archives and how it came to Kennesaw State University and the Zuckerman Museum of Art. As we're all probably very familiar with, the story of that SGCI started in 1972 by a consortium of printmakers in the Southeast wanting a venue to talk about their art and process. About 1977, Dr. Tom Dewey, art historian from Old Miss, the University of Mississippi, came to a conference and was tasked with taking back the prints and portfolios from that conference. Little did he realize that he'd be doing it for the next 30 plus years. In 2010, I was approached at the conference in Philadelphia about the need to find a host home for the SGCI archives. By then it was housed at the University of Mississippi and Millsaps College and they wanted a permanent home for the collection in one place. We did a site visit to the archives in both locations and felt like it would be a good fit because we were in the process of building a brand new art museum on our campus and the timing seemed perfect. I returned to Kennesaw State and had discussions with administrations about submitting a proposal. So we decided to submit a proposal and we worked on a proposal fo folder and the letterhead pages that were designed by Kennesaw State students in the graphic design course. The proposal was written by the Zuckerman Museum of Art staff with full support of all of our administrators from the president, his cabinet, the dean, the director, all the way down to me. And we submitted our proposal and heard we were in the top three. And then ultimately, at the 2013 conference in Wisconsin, the board made the decision to award Kennesaw State the honor of being the SGCI host institution. Since then, we have worked actively with the board and the membership to make this a strong partnership. The board came for a site visit for their mid-year meeting in October of 2013 before the 2014 conference in San Francisco because it was a much more cost-effective uh, thing to do to have everybody travel to Atlanta, plus they wanted to do a site visit to see the campus in person and the museum while it was under construction. They got to tour the new museum and see all the areas that the archives would be housed in, and they got to see um, what was going to be the beginning of a wonderful partnership between Kennesaw State and the Southern Graphics Council and the museum. Since 2014, many members of the board and SGCI members have visited for meetings and for tours. At Kennesaw State, we value the relationship with SGCI and its membership. The Zuckman Museum of Art opened in March of 2014, and we, we received the archives shortly thereafter. One of, the, one of the exhibits at the opening was a salon-style highlights of the permanent collection, and of course, the SGCI collection was featured prominently. They chose a portfolio from the SGCI archives of some beautifully printed 3D houses to represent the archives new home. The museum is a beautiful building and has an award winning design. It is built into a hill and is adjacent to the Bailey Performing Arts Center so it is a pivotal feature in our arts district. Since the opening, the Zuckerman Museum staff has been assessing new portfolios uh, after each conference, and they also are trying to get the backlog of documentation of older portfolios up to date. 
As requested, here's a short video about what happens to your print when it arrives at the Zuckerman Museum of Art and becomes part of the archives for SGCI International. Archives is a broad scope of documents, materials, and information that can collectively substantiate an important contextual background of our organization. The Southern Graphic Council International Archive is housed the Zuckerman Museum of Art. The Zuckerman Museum houses more than 7,000 prints in its permanent collection, and since the SGCI collection is a living archive, they assess hundreds of new prints after each conference. The prints are carefully packed at the conference by the Zuckerman Museum staff and are transported to the museum, which is on the Kennesaw State University campus, which is about 25 miles north of Atlanta, Georgia. When they arrive at the ZMA, they travel through to the Collections Research Center, where the works are archived. Upon arrival, each portfolio is assigned a tracking number, which allows the Zuckerman Museum of Art to accession the work into the permanent collection. Each portfolio is then examined to ensure all of the prints and required paperwork are included. The paperwork is essential and we cannot accept prints without these forms. We catalog the portfolio itself, which may include a box, a colophon, a title page, or other accessories. We then catalog each print. During the cataloging, we write down all of the necessary information. Glassing interleaved between the prints is essential. It provides a protective barrier to keep one print from affecting another. Because a portfolio has different components that make it complete, like multiple prints, we assign an object number to each portfolio and print. The optic number is written on the top reverse corner of the work. And each print is given an archival tag. The entire portfolio is photographed for the database. The metadata is created to properly document each photograph. The registration collections manager enters all the information to our collections database management system, TMS. Once the portfolio has been cataloged and conditioned reported, we then assign each portfolio a permanent home in the museum collection. Paperwork and research are included in each object and artist file. Prior to 2013, portfolios used to arrive with no paperwork included. For portfolios previously submitted without paperwork, we will conduct research to verify information about the work. Only then can the work be officially placed in the museum collection. With all of this complete, we select some images from our professional shots to display on our website. This is an abbreviated list of the process your print goes through when it comes to its home in the permanent collection at the Zuckerman Museum of Art. We are honored to be the Archives host and we look forward to serving you in the future. Thank you, Valerie. And we have time for questions with Valerie. And before we move into that, I did want to say, as Valerie said, our organization was founded about 50 years ago in 1972. The executive board would like to thank Boyd Saunders for his work in founding SGCI. And we would encourage you as well to reach out to Boyd with cards or prints. This has been a difficult year for everyone, the pandemic here, so Boyd included. And please send inquiries our way so we can get you in touch. And Valerie, um, I have a question about the archives. 
Uh, can you tell me what the last print was? It looks hilarious. Oh gosh, the last print on the video? Yeah. I, gosh, you'd have to rerun it back by me. I'm, I have no clue. Uh, it's- Oh, it's, it, um, yes, I know, I do lithography. The Frankenstein? The <laughs> what? It, it was the, yes, I do lithography, it's the worst. I thought that was a great print. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I'll have to review it. I'm so sorry. I, I probably should have had you send me the questions ahead of time so I'd be ready with an answer. Oh, no, it's Sorry, this okay. is live, um, people. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Identify This print? Yes. Um, you know, since we started our relationship, we've been trying to figure out how to go through the um, backlog of prints before 2013. And we've been uh, photographing them in a very steady process. And, uh, you know, as artists are, some of the, the a lot of the paperwork or uh, ha uh, signatures are handwritten and wonderfully creative, but very hard to read. And there were a lot of them, especially at the 2017 conference that we held at Kennesaw State. Uh, we had some that uh, we weren't sure of the medium, even though I could, I could readily identify it. But, you know, we just need the documentation. So we got the... Uh, brainstorm idea of uh, doing this can you identify this print because people know each other and perhaps i'd see a print on the website and go oh that's my colleague so and so or you know and try and help us gather this information because we do have a backlog of about 40 years of prints with um not a thorough um you know a, amount of information that we're trying to catch up with Thank you. And it looks like we have a question from Nicole. Um, how often do you post the backlog? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, how often do you post the backlog? Her question is about older prints. I still can't hear you. Can anybody hear her hear in translate? <laughs> Valerie, try turning your volume up. I, we can hear Kate or Emmy, did you hear what she said? Margo, can you tell us? <laughs> Valerie, try turning your volume up. How often do we post the backlog? Anytime we get, um, anytime we get information about a print, we'll pull that one and put a new one on. And we're going to start fleshing that out even more um, as as we move forth. So we're looking forward to that quite a bit. My volume is. Uh, I heard you perfectly just a minute ago. Uh, can you hear me now, Valerie? Valerie, can you hear me now? I'm so sorry. I did hear you the first time. And it says my volume uh, maybe is all the way up. Q&A. Oh. Let, let me look over here. Can you, can you facilitate the questions it. for us, please? Yes. Is there any way to see the digital archive? OK, thank you. I've got some, I've got some questions here. Uh, is there any way? Right now, um, we're working on that. We're actively working on that. Um, we That's our. Our really our sole goal other than taking care of the prints is to get it online and get it so people can research it you know through topic through artists through medium through whatever um, so we're uh, we are very uh, interested in doing that how often do you post backlog what is the size of the staff of the Zuckerman Museum of the Art and are they independent of the college uh, the size of the staff I can't, don't have exact numbers it's seven to eight people a uh, bunch of student assistants, interns. Um, they are not independent of the college and actually they are under the College of the Arts and they're under the School of Art and Design. So we're, uh, that's kind of the hierarchy there. Um, anybody else have a question? <laughs> but if you come visit us at Atlanta, you can walk in and make an appointment or you know, let us know and you can see the archives. We can certainly make arrangements for that. Uh, Valerie, there is a question in the chat. I don't know if you can hear me um, from Opal Ecker. I still uh, can't hear you. I'm so sorry. I really don't know what happened because I heard you perfectly at first. Um, maybe, Emmy, you can come on and read that question from the chat. Valerie, can you hear me? No. I can ad lib for a minute and just tell you a little bit more. <laughs> um, Oh, the object numbers and advice uh, that I have for collections of uh, collectors unfamiliar with archive and editions works. You know, I, um, we, uh, the Zuckerman Museum uh, subscribes to the highest uh, museum standards. They use TMS as their inventory system. 
Uh, there, I don't really understand the system for archiving and the object numbers, but there's just a way they usually start, or they always start with the year dot something dot something. So you'll know which year it is by the first four digits. Um, the big, the most important thing though is um, really uh, if we could continue to actively start getting paperwork and documenting whose prints what and what it is. We did a little bit in Texas where, you know, we're like wanted you to tell us about, you know, these prints. And we're going to continue once we meet in person for the um, conferences to do that. And uh, um, just try and engage people, have the, can you identify this print at the, at the conference? Because the more people that see it, um, they'll start generating some information for us. Um, and, yeah, Margo just said she likes the feature that asks members to identify the prints. And actually, a couple times, um, I have uh, personally gotten involved and will con you know look it up and contact people because I do know a lot of people. And it's it's you know it's just going to take a little detective work on our part. <laughs> Is the name of the museum? <laughs> as assumed Mark Zuckerberg. Well, it's Zuckerman, uh, and it's for Bernard Zuckerman, his wife, Ruth Zuckerman, was a very famous sculptor, and um, he, she passed away, and he and his second wife, wife um, donated a large portion of the funds to create the museum. So in the, I think in the video, we were able to show, we weren't able to show much of the interior of the museum because there are different artist works up, but, um, if you look on our website, it, Zuck, Ruth Zuckerman's work is gorgeous. Um, so it's not, uh, it's nothing to do with Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> oh, Zuckerman. <laughs> oh, Margot Myers says, your print shop looks fantastic. It absolutely does. And it, uh, we just had a big opening last night for a presidential gala. Uh, and it, it's a spectacular space. And I invite anybody who's coming through Atlanta to let us know and you can come uh, play. We'd love it. I'm gonna check on the panelists. Uh, oh, somebody said I might wanna check out and come back in. Hmm, that probably won't happen. <laughs> Not successfully anyway. Um, yeah, and somebody else wrote, usually museum number, year, media, code, and number. Um, and that's probably what the Zuckerman does. I do know the first uh, number is the year. Um, uh, Laura, I just, uh, I heard her at first and I've just been sitting here, I haven't done anything different, so I'm not sure what I did wrong. How many prints are accepted per year? Now that's a good question. Um, it, that is pretty much dictated by the conference. Uh, depends on how many portfolios the conference has decided to have. Uh, I think they're no longer going to be accepting the whole members portfolio because it's like 300 prints, it's just, it's daunting. Um, but they do want the portfolios to, or the um, conferences to retain their flavor and to be able to accept the, the um, portfolios. So I would say an average without the members portfolio, um, 200 prints a year. Uh, well, it says, what other collections of work does the museum have? Uh, we have an extensive permanent collection. Um, we have the Athos Minaboni collection. Um, we have the Ruth Zuckerman, uh, her, her 3D works and drawings. Um, you know, I'll just be honest, um, I'm pretty uh, focused. I only care about prints. <laughs> That's all I care about that we have in our collection. Uh, you know, it's a youngish museum. Uh, Kennesaw State's only uh, started in 1963, so we're not that old. Although we are the second largest university in the Georgia State School System. Uh, the, the director of the museum is a question. Is Geo Sip, who's the director of the School of Art and Design, and we knew we have a new uh, director of curatorial services, uh, curatorial affairs, Cynthia Thompson, who is a printmaker, book artist. We have Rebecca Parker, who's um, I think she's a registrar. We're looking for a new a new registrations collections manager, um, and we have uh, education director. Um, Another uh, another man who does all the, um, he's a technician. Uh, so GeoSips, our head person, then Cynthia Thompson is the curatorial affairs person. 
do print students get to work in the archives? Let me tell you, I'm very proud to share with you that we have an endowed scholarship that's specific for an intern to work every semester and get, get paid to work in the permanent collection. And of course, the archives is the most important part. So they work actively in that. They scan, they, um, they just do everything as far as the uh, archives go. Um, you know, do visiting artists get to work with the collection? Um, that is definitely a goal of ours. We're starting a new Masters of Art in Museum Studies. It's totally online and if anybody who's interested, look it up. Um, but to have people actually come on site and interact, have, we have art historians, we have all kinds of things that we would love to make that become a very vibrant part of the museum experience. How long have I been with Kennesaw and SGCI? Oh, please, people, don't, put, don't ask me that. Uh, I'm joking. I, my first SGCI meeting was 1990 when I was in graduate school at University of Florida. And some of my alumni from Arizona State had the conference in Knoxville, um, 1990. So that was the first time I started with SGCI and I've been a member ever since. Kennesaw State, <laughs> somebody said go Gators. Kennesaw State, I started in 1996. Uh, I moved up from Gainesville, Florida. I was in graduate school at University of Florida, kicking and screaming because I loved Gainesville, and uh, came here, so, and it's worked out. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's worked out nicely. So it's been a while. Can I tell you more about the facilities at the Zuckerman? OK, absolutely can. Um, when we, and, you know, when we built the Zuckerman, uh, we would like to have been a little bit bigger. Uh, we do have, so this is the first stage of three. Right now it's about 9,000 square feet. It's um, combined with a huge atrium and another gallery. And it's also combined, I think it was mentioned with the um, Bailey Performing Arts Center that seats 700 people. Beautiful, beautiful facilities. One thing I've always been really thrilled with at Kennesaw State is their, um, their changes and their growth have been very uh, thoughtful, very well done, and uh, the Zuckerman is certainly part of that. Hold on. The storage and up, upkeep for prints. Uh, we have, uh, you know, um, some of the storage was shown in the video, archival everything, archival um, atmosphere, boxes, uh, liners, you know. Um, luckily with prints, the storage is not as bad as with Ruth Suckerman's sculptures. <laughs> so we have plenty of room for that. And they will, um, like I say, it's in the plans. Kennesaw is an incredibly vibrant university and they'll, they have the second and third um, stages planned. Um, can I reflect upon any particular memorable examples of you seeing the students work influenced by something seen in the archives? You know, uh, that, that happens a lot. Uh, they, I don't know how it is at other universities, but people come to Kennesaw State, there's almost no one that's ever come saying, I want to be a printmaker. Um, we have animation, illustration, other stuff, you know. So I have to really, uh, you know, be the cheerleader and rah, rah, rah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I see it all the time. They, they, they cannot believe the visual quality that a print has, the, you know, the, um, you know, the beauty of the surface, the multiple editions. So that I've seen several uh, wonderful things. Is there anybody else that has a question? Or you can go like this, Claire. <laughs> All right, listen, it is lovely to see you all. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon in person, maybe next year. Thank you. Valerie, thank you so much. I hear you now. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate everything. It's been wonderful. <laughs>